Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be answering the most commonly asked question or statement from the last video. And that is clearance for a built-in refrigerator. Yes, there, there is some massive confusion about clearances and how a refrigerator works. Uh, the confusion is, is that they need ventilation and room to breathe. The fact is, is they don't need any. Quite a few statements saying that I, that I have to install like vents on the back of the wall there, or that I have to have all sorts of room around the refrigerator. Refrigerators are designed to be fully enclosed. If you missed the last video, there is going to be cabinetry that goes up, around, and down so that this entire wall here is covered in cabinetry. And all you will see is just the face of the refrigerator. Every refrigerator has an installation manual. And in that manual, you will find clearances. Most refrigerators only require a half an inch. And, and that's, that's usually what I go by. It's just, some are less actually. This one here is one eighth of an inch clearance on the sides, one inch on the top, and the back of this is two inches. And there's always a note for the back clearance. It's, it ranges from one to two inches for the rear clearance. And that is not for ventilation, but for your plug and your, the water hookup for the, the, the ice maker and, and water. So uh, I'm going to put up some pictures of built-in refrigerators. I, I know it's quite common for the average house to not have a built-in refrigerator. Uh, it is very common and mandatory for a high-end kitchen or expensive home to have it surrounded, built into the cabinetry. When you get even higher up in the budget of the, the kitchen, the house, the refrigerator will have the same panels that the cabinetry does. So there, the doors are, are not curved like this. Uh, they're completely flat and made to have door panels installed over them. Custom made cabinet doors stuck right to them so that it blends right in with everything. That's, that's really up there and those are specifically designed refrigerators to receive those door panels. Just so that you can see here, this is about three quarters of an inch to an inch gap on this side. And this side has, has the same, about three quarters of an inch. Now on the top, I'm way, way, way above the specification. And the back, it's pulled out right now. It's probably got, oh yeah, I can fit three fingers in there. So we're easily within the two inch range on the back. I had a great comment from someone on the video where I built this recessed section here. And that was to put a stopper on the floor so that when you push the refrigerator back in, it sets the proper depth of, I'm going to make it one inch from that back wall so that you can't push it through the wall, it won't bang and it won't interfere with the electrical connection or the water connection. I want to source my information because uh, some people just can't fathom that a refrigerator doesn't need to be exposed to the sides and the back. So I'm going to post some screenshots of just uh, th this refrigerator uh, on the Home Depot website. If you have a new refrigerator that's still on the market, you may be able to find the installation manual right from Home Depot. In a few clicks, just click refrigerators, type your model number in, and if you scroll down, there'll be installation instructions and specifications. You'll open it, it'll be a PDF file. Uh, this one happens to be on like page 27, 26 or 27 of the manual. You scroll down, scroll down, and it shows you the, and it specifically states the clearances. Where this one is one eighth of an inch on the sides and the top. I think it was one eighth of an inch on the top as well, and two inches on the back for clearing the electrical and the water lines. So I would recommend that if you're doing this type of remodel in your kitchen, you look up that specification, but to just be on the safe side, if you have a half inch on either side, one inch on the top and one inch in the back, you're, you're covered. You don't need any fans or, or louvered vents on the back wall. Uh, that's just not how they were designed to work. Go right inside the door, 
You can find GE appliances, model number, serial number. You also use this information when you're getting uh, parts to repair. Though I don't usually do very many of these talking videos, but if there is something that, that, is, that is very evident in the comments, it just needs to be addressed so that there's no more confusion. Again, I got the sources. I put them right on the screen here. Um, you can, I'm just telling you how to find the information for your specific refrigerator. If you have any more questions about this remodel or any of my other videos, feel free to ask them. There is another very, very common question that gets asked every single day that has to do with privacy fences. And it's one of those things where when you are not in this industry, you have not built several miles of privacy fence, you probably wouldn't know the answer to. Maybe when I build another fence, I'll address that question. So please give the video a like. We're going to try to stretch this out to 10 minutes somehow. <laughs> and... Um, now, we're going to get really moving on this. They've, they started clearing out the kitchen. Uh, they started clearing out the dining room because that the kitchen to dining room wall is going to get opened up. Hopefully, there's a pocket door there now, so I know that there's some, some framing already in there. It'll easily come out. Um, but you never know what you're going to run into. And there's a specific way that I open up the wall to go about... Yeah, we'll get to that in... Uh, Maybe two videos will be tearing down all these cabinets. Goodbye.